Welcome to today's session. I'm Dr. Meera Asmi, basically working as consultant to government of Kerala and the managing partner of Broadway Events, one of the leading event management company operating in Goldson country, Kerala. So welcome to today's section. So just a quick recap from the previous section. I hope you will remember the previous section. So we started off with uh, uh, the essence of uh, event management company. What are the attributes you require in order to uh, start up a new event management company? So we identify certain terminologies like intellectual property, how it is have to be used is it going to be uh, how is the competition going to be is it, is it completely coming out from the uh, customer point of view or is it going to be your company's uh, profile which is going to be the intellectual property the importance of digitalization how we are going to reach out to the masses in uh, through rural development how this uh, event management platform uh, can be broadened to greater extents including the government scenario how we can associate with uh, the government organizations for, and other sports and other cultural activities and make it available to masses at large. So we have understood the immense opportunities which are lying ahead in the event management industry, how lucrative the industry is. So that was a quick re recap on the previous section. And we ended up in um, with a uh, assignment on business plan. We have an upcoming session completely on that, on coming up with a business plan. How, what is a business plan basically? We just had a, a quick uh, understanding about business uh, plan. What is expected in that? That was also covered in the previous section. But we have a complete lesson plan coming up immediately after this on business plan what is being expected on a business plan, what is going to be your vision, mission, objectives, goals, all these will be taken in detail in the uh, upcoming sections on business plan. So that was a quick recap of what we have uh, tried to analyze in the previous section. Now we'll start with the new section, continuing or continuation of the previous section on opportunity assessment for starting a new event management company. So we said that, you know, like uh, essential services for the event company is very essential. Like uh, you have to categorize uh, the events. We have to understand how the intellectual property is going to be utilized, whether it is going to be the company's intellectual property or whether the client is a client like bigger clients like government or sports council or international film festival who have their own logo, who have their own intellectual property, including design team, etc is being used or a combination of both. For example, if you are going for a MICE meeting, incentives, that kind of a corporate event, then how it is going to get shared, the intellectual property is going to get shared. So the opportunity lies in analyzing each and every activities. You have to understand the essential services of the event, the categorization of the events, how you are going to use the intellectual property, how you're going to manage the event on a, on a personal basis and also on a social basis. What are the activations that are expected in this? The possibility of digital, di digitalizing these events, the opportunities lying ahead in the rural sports and government events. So immense, immense, immense opportunities lies in this, um, in starting up an event management company. It's a very, very lucrative company, uh, lucrative industry. So uh, being an entrepreneur, one should identify the specialization or the niche area of the event company within these broad categories. So like, you know, you cannot become, uh, you know, like a jack of all events. You have to very carefully understand which is going to be your area of specialization. Why that is important? Because, you know, like segmentation is very important. Segmentation plays a major role in determining your market share. 
you cannot go on holding each and every every possible event coming your way you need to have a usp you need to have a unique selling proposition you need to identify which niche are you going to concentrate more obviously you have lot of lots of opportunities but at the same time you have competitors also so how you're going to differentiate yourself from that of your competitors is very important and for that you have to have a niche segment all for yourself so being a startup company being a start new event management company maybe you can come up with one or more specialized services which will cater to the needs of customers for example if you are going to concentrate more on the corporate sector you can conduct retreats for the corporate sector you can plan party events for the employees therein you can host concerts fashion shows you can even organize uh, what you call as mice that is meetings incentives conferences and ex and exhibitions these are some of the specialized categories which you can see in you know, a event sector this is an example wherein uh, the new event management company is going to concentrate more on the corporate sector this is one just example moving on the entrepreneur should attempt to identify and satisfy the current or unmatched customer needs which are relevant to the local contest so the key word or the buzzword is flexibility being an event management company you will have a lot of you have your um, you know like uh, you have your set of goals you have your set of objectives you have everything standardized practices procedures everything is there but at the same time you have to understand one thing is that there should be room for flexibility because here what is more important is that you need to you need to develop a direct interaction with your client in such a way that there should be a room for customization it should be something like a tailor made something unique which you're coming exclusively for that particular company or or, or a, a particular client exclusivity should be there in order to accumulate that exclusive exclusivity into it what is more important is that you should have room for flexibility in order to add up to their expectations you have you should be very open with your client and you should be able to assimilate their ideas in such a way that the resources you hold can be optimally utilized in order to make a best possible effect of customization to the client that is going to give you added mileage so there should be room for flexibility you have to identify all the current or unmatched customer needs you know like customer will be having a lot of expectation maybe they will not be able to tell you exactly what they have in their mind so as an event management company what you should have to have in hand is that you should have surprises for them they will have a minimum expectation about how the event is going to be but you know a bit of a surprise is going to be more appealing to your client so that is going to give you an upper rank uh, as compared to that of your competitors give them a surprise very warm surprise so that you know customer will actually for the next event from your side the customer will be actually looking forward to have a bit more creative uh, creative uh, ideology from your side so they understand that you know you understand their concept better than they can put that into words you you do understand their concept that is very important that is how you maintain a very good rapport with your clients so for this what is more important is that you should have a lot of creativity you should have new technologies in hand you should have new marketing approach so this overall will help you in building up a brand name a brand image which will lead to customer loyalty see being an event management company you are not just coming up with a service or you are not just an event planner just giving a rendering a service to a particular customer or, or, or to a particular client base no you have much more than that you know in order to become a successful player in the industry in order to grab a, a suitable position a respectable position in this lucrative industry you have to build up yourself as a brand 
and you have to uh, develop your client base in such a way that the brand loyalty is going to work the customer loyalty is going to work once they plan an event with you you should make sure that no we you you are going to record the events with them it's not just a one time affair this is going to go on with further additions with new surprises new ideologies new technological enhancements you are going to give them a better and better version of the entire event more than what they expect or more than what they can actually tell you what they expect this has immense scope so room for creativity how you are going to uh, build up with the new technologies in hand and the new marketing approach the creativity innovation all these counts in building up your brand image and that is going to have more customer loyalty moving on so there are certain advantages of uh, shortlisting the essential services for the event management company see for the customers for the client point of view they will dot you in if they feel that you know your organization your event management company is going to align with their requirements for example if your uh, event organization is uh, specializing in mice for academic institution then if there is a client who is uh, interested in organizing a seminar will actually will actually try to contact you rather than going for a general event planner so you understand the differentiation so you need to understand that what is going to be your area of specialization because that is really important because you know like once you highlight that this is going to be your usp or this is going to be the key uh, service you're going to offer exclusively for your clients then that means you are creating a room for yourself and when you are identifying your area of specialization and you are going to uh, you know highlight it on a public note then people know for sure whom to contact for this particular event it it will not go in for a general search but they can specifically identify which event planner they require for this particular activity so that is very very important so you have to Uh, make sure that you are actually shortlisting the essential services the entrepreneur will spend less time resources and efforts to familiarize himself with the elements of the selected services and create her own her or his business network you being an entrepreneur you should actually in the business plan as we have uh, talked earlier you should actually understand the resources and you should understand what is there in the environment around you you cannot spend more and more time exploiting the environment around you you cannot go in um, all the time for a detailed research in order to identify the opportunities you should have all these in hand then update okay before going for the for a uh, new event management company you have to have a business plan you have to identify the opportunities lying in this particular industry how you are going to shortlist your essential services as an emc so then you know like the time you need to spend on each and everything gets reduced so that once uh, you get into a client you get in touch with a the client then the next stage becomes much easier you actually know what is the how what are they expecting from your side then the next time when they are coming back to you you know actually you, you have done the homework on this particular organization so you know what they expect making a note of it keeping a uh, keeping proper report based on what activities you are undertaken in the past that is going to gain an advantage and that will reduce a lot of time so this will actually help in creating a uh, better business network see the the bus word is networking your your organization your business will definitely depend upon the networks you are developing in the meantime because your business depends on proper networking that is very essential and that's very crucial so next is about the expense part how you are going to control the resources so being a, a startup company when you are going to come up with a new even management company you have to understand one thing you cannot 
make a build a empire of yourself and then start the business it doesn't work that way why because then it is going to be too very expensive expenses are going to be out of your hand the investment is going to be on a higher end which is not really appreciable it's of obviously yes if you want you can build up your empire and then go uh, searching for your clients well that can also work but on a gentle note because when we are doing a business the returns counts the return on investment counts to your shareholders to your investors to your creditors your answerable right so what is more important is that you should have a fair idea about what are the in initial expenses that are going to shoot up in order to set up your organization in order to cater to the needs of the clients so that's the reason why you have to shortlist your essential activities so what is required for that particular activity because you may you make sure that okay you are going to concentrate on this particular entity you're going to cater to this niche you're going to cater to the mice segment or you're going to cater only to wedding planner you're going to cater to uh, birthday parties so you just shortlist your essential services in such a way that the overheads can be controlled the resources you require for that particular segment of uh, of segment of event needs to be general uh, needs to be uh, initiated in the initial stages so that is actually going to save a lot of money your resources are not going to get obsolete over a period of time you are just picking up whatever is required at the moment then gradually build it up on that so that is another important um, um, uh, point that has to be uh, considered you have you don't have to go for a uh, high end technology and software um, to uh, which will cater to large scale events if you are just concentrating on small what you call wedding planning or birthday parties or something like that so depending upon what is your view where you see your niche what is the essential services that you are going to highlight based on that arrange your resources in such a way that you know you can optimally utilize the resources and you can have a financial control on the activities associated with it that's very important so when we assess the business potential of the shortlisted uh, services what are the parameters um, we have to consider see the shortlisted services will definitely need to have certain resources at its disposal so for that you know like there should be investment for like uh, some capital purchases which includes technology stage material logistics etc being an event planner what is more important is that you should have sufficient stage material because that is going to build up the theme right you have to ha have a lot of show pieces and you know like uh, uh, materials logistics is, is important and to what extent the technology is essential all these have to be made a note of you have to analyze the competitive threats and risk involved in this risk is directly associated to the competitors the competition is there may be cutthroat at times so that is the reason why you know you have to highlight what is the essential service which you are going to uh, portrait more into it cannot be a jack of everything you need to specialize that will actually cut down a lot of competitive threats and even when you analyze the um, you know uh, the competitive uh, threats you can actually make some kind of a distinction in such a way that you can actually place your service in such a way that it is going to be a bit different from that from that of your competitor you can ensure that life expectancy of the events you know like there is nothing like a standardized procedure or standardized even pattern that is going to exist over a period of time no this is a very dynamic industry people's uh, preference change the cultural habits change and people want new and new um, uh, you know creative ideas coming up so you know like the life expectancy of a particular category of event is not on a higher end you cannot just plan a particular event just like that keep it standardized and use it everywhere no it doesn't work that way what you require is that you need to have 
you need to understand that the expectancy of a particular category of events doesn't hold forever. It will be time bound. Once you reach the time bound, you have to update it to the next level or else you'll be out from this scenario. That is very important. Pricing of events as compared to demand for statutes and suppliers in the market. So when we plan an event, for example, wedding. In India, wedding doesn't happen, especially in the southern part of India, wedding doesn't always happen every month. So nowadays it happens almost every month, yes. People have changed, ideologies have changed, traditions have changed, yes. But at the same time, there'll be a demand for a certain kind of events at a particular point of time. So when you price the event, you have to price it accordingly that, you know, if it is going to be a peak time, then you have to understand that the suppliers, the logistics, everything is, you have to add up to that as well. So then the pricing of your event will also be in a higher range. But if, if it is the other way out, you are actually planning up an event when you know like there is uh, uh, not much of a competition or something like that and where you can actually optimize your resources and if you can cut down your cost to a, to a decent level you can reflect that in the um, your budgeting your your final pricing as well this will actually give a flexibility to the clients also because they know what to expect with the pricing strategy. They know what to expect at a peak hour and on an off peak hour. That really helps. Then the profitability and the willingness to initially compromise profits for growth. So the moment you start the business, yes, what is in your mind is return on investment plus a very good, decent profit. That is the motive of any, any uh, what you call a product or a service sector. Very true. But initially you cannot grab a lot of profit because what you require at, at the initial stages is that you need to develop your networking in such a way that you are going to elaborate your client base maybe you start with a single client based on the work you perform on that particular client you're going to build up your networks so you need to be very very dynamic very diplomatic when you deal with your customers when you deal with your clients because initially what you need is you want to have more networking and you need to grab more opportunities. You need to have more customer uh, ends. You need to have more clients to your list. Then slowly, step by step, you can reach a break even point. From there onwards, you can beat the profits. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to be very patient. You have to plan your activities very, very, very diplomatically in such a way that you reach the break, break even point at a at a minimum time then from there you're going to reap the profits even the part of the profit you'll have to invest it back in the in your sector because you know, this is a industry which is very dynamic and you need to have constant upgradation of the same so not everything that comes your way is going to be a profit it has to be reinvested many times you have to go in for a better technology. You have to go in for better raw materials, you know, like uh, stage arrangements and everything, you know, you have to come up with new and new ideas. So this also, you know, like reinvesting is something going, that is going to take place on a continuous note. So when you plan your profitability, make sure that you have room in order to compromise a big when you start it up at the initial stages. So market growth, market growth, we have to categorize it in such a way that we have to see the overall market growth. At the same time, we have to see the growth within the specific categories. Being an event planner, we said that we have to shortlist our services to very essential services, but that doesn't mean that we are not going to take up a different uh, um, uh, sequence of events if it is coming our way. If we can do it, we'll go for it. So you make sure that you have a generalized approach in such a way that you, you are there in the market, but you are specializing in a particular, particular niche at the same time. So there is, so when you, when you see, you have to um, um, make it in such a way uh, that uh, this market growth is going to be an, on an overall basis and within the specific categories. 
and the seasonality and cultural trends as we discussed earlier no not every season is uh, lucrative for this industry so seasonality and cultural trends might vary which will have a direct reflection on your industry in general coming to the market research opportunities when you actually do a market research uh, the um, market research survey what is more important is that you have to un understand that the the business potential of these shortlisted surveys is thorough which requires a thorough market research analysis extensive market research analysis you have to understand the market the real vibe in the market how potential the market is how potential the niche is based on that you have to understand for that in order to understand that what is there in the segment you have to undertake extensive market research so for that you have to scan the environment in such a way that you understand the overall business landscape what is the general landscape of the um, of the business and what are the opportunities lying in that for that you have to scan the internal as well as the external environment all this will be uh, dealing in subsequent sections in detail so you have to uh, establish before going for a market research you have to establish uh, uh, you know like uh, the event company in such a way that it should have uh, the information on the new mod models business models events the industry trends changes in the models competitor analysis the new entrants the customer change the changing requirements the changing trends room for customization technological development all these have to be thoroughly thoroughly analyzed one by one one step at a time you have to do a detailed research in such a way that this is going to add up to your business in the long run this is one uh, a traditional uh, you know like a, a wedding in south india so uh, see see the customization this is what we have uh, talked about the customization uh, see that uh, pillars and everything that is being generated this represents a typical south indian wedding scenario so these are these are how we actually give room to customization depending upon the customer uh, customer taste and preference you have to be flexible in in order to come up with certain uh, uh traditional things that is going to match up with the expectation so when we uh, talked about the environment uh, scanning there is a procedure by rita mcgrath and ian macmillan so here in environment scanning they start with the redesign of product or services so you have a service you know you what you are doing in the event management sector but you have to redesign your sector in such a way that you know you put yourself a bit different from that of the other players in the industry for that you have to redifferentiate your product or services so whatever service you are rendering for example a concert a concert being hosted by one event management company will not be the same as being hosted by another event management company so there is a difference the, the concept is basically the same it's a concert it's a music concert for example the concept is same maybe the artist remains the same but how the event management company is going to present it is going to be different so do you re differentiate the product or services reconfigure the market you know the market is on a general the, the whole market is there the whole population is there but whom are you going to cater to the niche the segment you're going to cater to that is very important so reconfigure the market in order to understand which is going to suit best for your organization resegmentation of the market which level which category of or which niche are you going to categorize that is very important so resegment your market for example if you are going to contact birthday parties consider that that is a uh, essential service you are listed out birthday party you are a event um, planner who is going to specialize in birthday parties a birthday party of a toddler and a birthday party of a of a of a child that of a teenager that of a aged person it is going to vary so within the same niche same niche same segment of you know like coordinating only birthday parties that itself you can resegment 
the event planning for a toddler and an event planning for a teenager's birthday is going to be different. So you have to resegment the market. So development of breakthrough competencies, you have to have a competitive edge all by yourself. You have to have a USP, unique selling proposition of your service in such a way that this is actually going to become a breakthrough competency that is going to uh, you know, uh, differentiate your service as an event planner from that of your, that of your competitors. So all these will uh, get, get in more and more detail in the subsequent sections. So then coming back again to the market research to ascertain the viability of an event management company. What's the viability? So for that, same thing which we have discussed in the environment analysis, you have to redesign the product or services, you have to come up with new designs, you have to uh, customize the service as per the client requirements, you have to differentiate the uh, services in order to com uh, come up with new unique propositions to the clients. USP is very important. You have to have the, you have to consistently define new and new propositions to the clients. That is how you differentiate your services. You have to reconfigure the market. You know, you can um, configure um, with the help of new technology, new entrants, new business models. And this is how you have to understand being an event management company. How am I going to reach out to masses? How am I going to cater to different segments in the market? That is very important. So you have to reconfigure the market. You have to resegment the market because you have to come up with different business model and process or orientation, which is going to mark a different segmentation altogether in the market. We discussed about the party event, a birthday party of a toddler and the birthday party being arranged for a teenager is going to be different. So you have to resegment the market. Breakthrough competencies with the cutting edge technology, internet penetration, go influence of youth in India's consumer markets, it becomes inevitable for the event management company to develop new and cutting edge competencies to keep pace with the environment. This is a dynamic environment. This is a lucrative sector. In order to sustain here, enhance your growth, what you need is to have more and more breakthrough competencies. So what are the techniques for conducting market research for events? First one, you have to understand the target market. Who is your audience? Who are the clients who are interested in hiring the service of an event management company? So for that, you have to understand, you have to have an uh, understanding about how you're going to identify your target audience, where are they located, what are the requirements, what could be the possible expectations from their side. So being an entrepreneur, you can uh, direct the marketing towards them. Because you have to reach out to the customers, the, more than the customers reaching out to you, you being an event management company, you have to reach out to the um, clients in such a way that, you know, you have to educate them that, okay, we, we are a new player in the industry and we are having so many services at our disposal. We have customized tailor-made services for your clients and we have a certain, uh, you know, like breakthrough competencies, which are going to differentiate the same services that is being offered by our company details you have to make your own networks in such a way that you have to create a self shelf space for yourself for your company so you have to understand the changing socioeconomic patterns everything in the environment is changing nothing is static everything is dynamic you know even the social economic patterns are changing the uh, when the economic uh, um, um, economic development of the of the country varies that gets reflected in the customer's spending pattern so the economic uh, the uh, economic life economic changes will have a direct impact on the social life of the people of the population so that is going to get reflected in how they're going to spend how much they are ready to spend in the for certain events or something like that so this these are things that keeps on changing so we have to being an event management company we have to have a thorough understanding of the changing scenario in the social and economic patterns in the environment so increase in the disposable income and the large youth population in india who will be decision makers for spends in the coming decades for example you know in a in a home you know the children play an important role in uh, what do you call in in uh, the spending pattern of a family see the father and mother might be working 
but the but the uh, but how it is going to get spent depends on other family members as, as well so mostly on a general note the youth the young people are the people who are going to spend more on um, uh, on the market they're going to spend more so the disposable income so if you want to spend more then people who should have more disposable income at their at their convenience so how so this economic um, uh, reflections in the environment that is going to have an impact on the customers um, uh, what do you call the spending pattern that will ref and get reflected into our industry as well the technologic advancements such as internet penetration internet usage and mobiles increase awareness of global trends in fashion science lifestyle and other aspirational categories the target market when you analyze all these the technological as um, technological advancements has to be taken care of because this is the era of internet you have you can reach every person every person being in any nook and corner of the country through internet so it is connected people there is not much of a differentiation if you are in the urban area or in the rural area because people are now connected more through the net so the geographical location is becoming less and less important so the digital digital platform gains more importance the motives of the audiences to attend events including social organizational or personal you know the motives of the audiences also differ maybe consider a seasonal thing if it is going to be a monsoon season people will not actually prefer to go out for a carnival or some other you know like people will not be much enthusiastic in uh, spending time uh, what do you call um, um, spending time out so these seasonal changes the motives of the audience in accordance with certain aspects in the environment will also have an impact on the extent to which they are willing to attend the events next is competitor analysis you should have thorough information about the your competitors who are the competitors in the industry who are the owners what are the employee base what is the team that is being comprised of what are the clients they are catering to who are the client list who are market value with the reputation in the market that's very important the reputation of your competitor in the market is very important the market share how much is the business share they have in the total market what is their annual turnover what are the number of events they have uh, organized in a particular event why are people going to attend their events what is so unique about their events what's the fault what is that one thing that gains more clients to them how do they get more clients and sponsors for their events what are their promotional strategy including the media planning public relations and other corporate contests a thorough understanding of the competitor analysis is very very essential in order to establish your position in the in the market you have to understand where you stand in the market only when you understand where your competitor is there in the market the placing of yourself in the market with respect to that of your competitor is more important so the competitor analysis is very important finally you have to have a event report when you're going for an event you should have a thorough report with you you it's like a blueprint the blueprint of the whole venue whole event that has to be made ready with you it's not that okay you got into a client you got the requirements you're immediately planning it so you need to understand that a heterogeneous team is going to work on this along with the client along with the customers the the, the audience of the clients this is actually an interactive section where there is going to be a heterogeneous group so how you're going to coordinate with them is very essential for that you have to have a even report in hand you should you should do proper homework in such a way that you know what to plan what to expect how to go about it so you should understand the seating and the lighting arrangement which is very essential you should understand the promotional materials you're going to use the blueprint of the whole venue you know the the, the entire topography of the venue the program and the food menu the details of sponsors partners and the clients the other service providers are DJs, anchors, makeup artists, performers, photographers, videographers, decorators, florists, caterer, technicians, etc., etc., etc. You should have a thorough report in your hand 
before going for the event. This is very important. Doing a proper homework is very essential in order to make sure that you are on the right track and you're going to stick on to the stock reward. Finally, the financial assessment, which is very, very important because huge money is going to get involved in this um, in the form of investment, in the form of working capital. You have to understand that whether this project you are going to take this event uh, or even which you are going to plan or which you are going to uh, organize is going to be financially viable or not. You cannot just go and grab each and every project that is coming in your way. You cannot take up every event plan and event, uh, um, event that is coming up for your way. So what is more important is that you have to clearly, thoroughly analyze whether this event is going to be financially viable for your organization or not. Because, you know, you should have to make a bit of a profit while managing the overhead expense. So if you cannot, you know, but at, at the same time, as I told you initially, it is not always about um, uh, increasing your profit share. No, you have to maintain a marginal profit. Whatever is coming out of it, more than that is obviously great, but that marginal profit has to be there. Otherwise, it is not going to be financially viable, and that could lead to huge losses for your company. And the and the long run, you know, like you'll be in um, in huge debts if you don't plan your financial assessment properly. In order to undertake the financial assessment, financial appraisal, you have to analyze the investment outlay, the cost of the project, how, uh, what is the means of financing, how you're going to go about it. Because you know, you might be getting the payment, maybe uh, uh, part of the payment you might get um, prior to the event and part of the payment only you are going to get it after the payment. So be beyond that, be without expecting what is coming from the customer end, you have to have a financial planning, you have to have a means of financing. So what is the means of financing you're looking forward to? What are the projected for, um, profits? What are the overhead expenses? What are the fixed and variable costs that is going to uh, come out with it? What's the big even point? The cash flows of the project, the investment worthiness assessed on various criteria, the projected financial position, and the level of risk associated with the business. So all these have to have a thorough understanding before you start up with your even management company. This is very, very, very important. If you don't have a handbook of a financial appraisal intact, that is going to affect your business because you will not have a strong foundation. You don't know where you are standing. You don't know how you're going to get involved in this. So for that, a financial planning and at the same time, other resource planning is also very important. Other resource planning include the legal assessment. So you need to understand that, you know, like the legal environment is very important, both the lo local and the national environment, because there are certain regulations, rules and regulations within, and that actually provides a framework within which the citizens cannot do beyond that. Okay, you are organizing a corporate party. Maybe it can be, uh, you know, like a, when you have a, a socializing party, you know, there is room for social drinking. But to what extent you can go for it, that is regulated by the legal framework. You have to, you have to uh, determine everything in such a way that you are operating within the legal framework that is um, uh, supported by the state as well as by the country. The legal cont uh, contest both allows and prohibits certain opinion decisions and actions, which you obviously you know you, you have no right to indulge in, in any unlawful activities. You cannot grab in huge profits through drug trafficking or other illegal activities, which is completely prohibited, which is completely against the ethics of conducting a business, which cannot be undertaken at any point of time. The entrepreneur must be aware of the relevant laws and regulations affecting the proposed venture. So that is the understand the legal environment is very, very, very important. So when you start up a um, even management company, the legal issues that has to be taken care of is that you have to uh, determine the legal ownership of the business. What kind of ownership it, is it? Is it going to be a sole proprietor? Is it going to be a partnership? Is it going to be a company? So you have to determine the legality of the ownership of the business. You have to maintain appropriate records in order to cater to the purpose of uh, remitting taxes as and when applicable. You have to have a lease and other financial negotiation uh, negotiations. You should have legal contracts and agreements uh, with all the stakeholders. You have to um, file for your patents. You have you can go for a trademark registration, service registration, and copyright protection. So these are the legal uh, things which you have to take care of once you're going to start up your event management company. 
Another important thing is ecological assessment because at an event management company, you are going to set up, uh, you know, like uh, so many activities outdoors, which is actually, uh, you know, uh, which will actually have an impact on not only on the people around you, but other living beings, including flora, fauna, animals, insects, etc. So, you know, like uh, you have, you can plan up your event in such a way that you, you are going to be ecologically friendly. For example, plastics are completely banned because that is going to have a negative impact on the ecology. That is going to have a negative impact on the natural environment. So get out of that because that is a legal provision. You no plastics means no plastic. Ecologically very safe means ecologically very safe. You have to be very supportive in such a way that you're not going to harm the earth, water, air, any insects that are in, any animals that are in, that you're not going to disturb any flora and fauna along with the human beings. So that is very important. So ecological analysis is important when you particularly identify each and every project that is coming up your way. So when we talk about the structural business organization, you can have a sole proprietorship where a single person is going to be the owner of the unit. Uh, he he is actually going to be uh, what do you call uh, the uh, the 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 and the business is going to be carried by the sole proprietor. But you need to understand one thing: there is something called the a separate entity concept. The owner is different from the business. Okay, the business he is undertaking a particular event management business, but that doesn't mean that he is not the business. He is just an owner and he is doing a particular business with respect to event management company. It could be a partnership where you require minimum two people and a maximum of 20 numbers. It can be a corporation or a limited, um, a limited company, a, a public limited company or a private limited company where you need to have minimum two persons and maximum of 50 persons. But uh, for, uh, if you're going for a public limited company, it can be formed only with a minimum of seven persons and it can go up to in, um, unlimited persons. You can issue shares, you can uh, invite shareholders. So that is a different factor it can be cooperative that is owned and controlled by the people employees working on it you have you can um, uh, you know like a it's like a joint ownership of the employees therein it can be franchising you know like once you build up your brand you can actually have franchises across um, different parts of the uh, country and you know like uh, it is something between uh, entrepreneurship and the employment and there will be some kind of a system where the the franchiser and the dealer that is a franchisee will have a service agreement under mutually agreed terms and conditions so these are the different types of um, uh, structure of business organizations where you can get your even management company registered so uh, we, uh, we understood about the importance of market research. Next important thing is a SORT analysis. What do you understand by SORT analysis? SORT stands for the strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats that lies in, the, in a particular organization. It's a strategic tool, basically. So when we are coming up with an event management company, we should have a thorough understanding about what are the strengths, what are the competencies you have, what are the strengths you have, your team could be a strength, your financial, uh, you, you have good financial uh, support, that could be your strength. You, you have more advanced technology at your disposal, that could be your strength. So you have to understand a clear understanding, you have to have a clear understanding about what are the strengths that is in hold for you. Then W for weakness, what are the weakness? What are the limitations? Rather than putting it as a weakness, what are the limitations you have? Maybe, you know, like uh, you don't have, you're not, um, you don't have access to much of the technology. That could be one limitation. You have financial constraints. That could be another limitation. Then you have opportunities. What are the opportunities that is lying in the environment? How can you make this particular industry a lucrative industry? What are the potentialities there in? Identify the opportunities there in and the threats. Your competitor can be a threat. The change economic pattern in the uh, country as a whole can be a threat. So identify the threats that is lying ahead in the environment. So this is actually going to be very helpful in order to evaluate the events for a better performance in the future. Apart from sort analysis, you have something called um, uh, see the strengths are you know like uh, the internal attributes of the company or the project what are the internal attributes that is going to help in achieving the objectives of the company what are the weakness or shortcomings of the company that will that is going to have a negative impact on the performance 
uh, what are the opportunities are there some favorable circumstances lying in the uh, uh, which are the external factors in the organization and the threats in the external environment like change in the economy market trends unfavorable situation what are the changing even the political scenario that is going to get changed that can be also a possible threat and finally you have something called the zero down approach this sort analysis is, is uh, should be followed by a zero down approach See, when the, in a zero down approach, what you, uh, is, what you need is that, you know, you understand your objective, you understand what is your vision. And you, from that, you have to generate most suitable alternatives. You have to uh, go on generating all the positive alternatives in order to achieve that particular objective. So once you have jotted out all the uh, possible um, uh, alternatives in this regard, the next thing is you have to ascertain the most suitable and viable business idea from the list of uh, you know identified alternatives for this particular for uh, for establishing this particular event management company. So this can be undertaken only through a proper analysis of the strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. The idea of the highest score, the strengths and opportunities will be selected. So this is what you understand by the zero down approach. We'll actually uh, go on in detail about all these in the subsequent sections. So before we end this section, I want you, uh, I want the uh, learners uh, to come up with a thorough understanding about uh, the, you, um, the, the last section we discussed about uh, coming up with a, uh, what do you call, a business plan. Yes. So uh, now I want you to uh, uh, do a sort analysis of your organization. What are the strengths that you see in this particular organization, your event management company? what highlight all the strengths you think as strengths strengths remember one thing strength is something going to be internal with respect to the internal organization what are the strengths you see limitation is also internal what are the limitations within the framework what are the limitations you see within the framework now you come to the opportunities opportunities and threats are something external external in the environment identify the opportunities lying for your particular event management company. Finally, the threats. What are the possible threats you see in the current scenario with respect to the current scenario you are currently in? What are the possible threats you see in the external environment? Make a note of it because uh, next section is going to be on business plan where we have to uh, do a better homework on the business plan. So if you want to come up with a good business plan, you have to have a thorough understanding about the SORT analysis. Thus you have to understand the strength and weakness, which is internal to your organization. You have to identify the opportunities and threats that is lying in the external environment. And based on that, you have to come up with a zero down operation wherein you know you identify the objective. In the, in the last section, you prepared a business plan with a correct vision statement and a mission statement. Based on the vision statement, where you actually see your organization in the future, that's a vision statement, where you want to place your organization in the future is your vision statement. And based on that, undertaking the sort analysis, you have to come up with, or you have to do the zero down approach wherein you are going to generate all the poss possible alternatives in order to attain to this particular vision. What is the main objective? Okay, based on that, generate as many object, as many alternatives as possible in order to achieve that particular objective or that particular vision. And based on that, based on the sort analysis you are undertaken, based on that, pick the most suitable and viable alternatives which can be put to practice. This is a, a section of work for you. Please do take it very seriously because you need to understand, how, you need to have a very, very, very solid foundation in this uh, section in order to move further. In the upcoming sessions, we'll be dealing more with the business plan, how to go about it, how to analyze the business plan, what are the objectives, all this will be um, clearly uh, analyzed in the upcoming sessions. So, so thank you so much for your patient listening. I hope this was interesting and this is useful for you.
so uh, hopefully we'll be uh, coming up with the next section very soon thank you for your patient listening thank you so much <laughs>